in uh, Sayokali and Atensakali, we place a heavy emphasis on the blade. In, um, in both systems, we are blade-based. In fact, most, martial art, most Filipino martial arts are weapon-based. So the attributes and skills that we attain, we usually learn them from the weapon first. Unlike many of the other East Asian uh, traditional martial arts where the weapon is taught last as a specific skill set, most of our skills are, uh, are transferred through the weapon and taught as concepts. Um, Guru Dan likes to use the term motion grouping or uh, clumping in order to uh, group our gross motor motions and install our fundamental movements that can be applied with or without a weapon. Now for today, I'm going to use um, a long blade, and I'm going to use our base, one of our basic vital templates from the Sayokali system. Now if I just scarecrow for the camera, the template that I'm going to use today is called Vital Template 2 of 9. Okay, it's a 9 count template. My first count is a slash right across the throat, palm up slash across the mid-thyroid, palm down slash to the lower abdomen, sometimes we call it the blue worm. This is really as a deep slash targeting the abdominal aorta, so I have my one and two. My three is a palm down a high hooking thrust to the neck. My four is a low palm down hooking thrust to the kidney. My five is a palm up, upward diagonal uppercut, right across the body. My six is a palm down, upward diagonal uppercut through the leg and to the left femoral. My seventh is my palm down thrust to the heart. My eighth is a slash straight down, almost a flywheel slash, but not really coming all the way through, just a vertical slash down. And my nine is a palm up thrust through the navel to the abdominal, abdominal aorta. So my nine count vital template two of nine is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, if I'm by myself, that's my template, and the template itself is a long blade template. One of, the, uh, one of the advantages to using longer weapons is now when I'm in the same kind of situation, when I have my son, even with these handlebars extended, even at my furthest reach, with uh, as much obstruction as the handlebars provide, at the very least I can start to provide cover for my son. So now, at the range where someone might try and touch my son or hurt my son, I can start to engage them with our weapon here. Now, all of our weapons, especially in the Sayakali system, we just refer to them as force multipliers. And force multipliers can be anything that augments a certain attribute or a skill or a strength that we would normally have in combat. Whether it's impact, you know, with a stick, the force multiplier of a stick uh, augments or increases the ability to make strong shattering impact. With blades, it's a force multiplier as far as my ability to penetrate and cause damage. Um, with longer weapons, I have the advantage of reach, of uh, increased distance, and of increased range. I may have different properties of the blade that can start to uh, shield and protect. Um, so a force multiplier could be anything. It could be a sarong that increases torque. It could be night vision that increases sight. It could be any kind of tool that we use to enhance uh, existing attributes that we'd like to use in combat. So, again today we're going to be using the long blade and adapt Vital Template 2 of 9 into uh, how we start to use it to as a protective measure um, and protect my son while he's in his wheelchair. So, now from, if I face the camera, uh, some of it I will definitely have to modify because now I have an obstruction in front of me that I do not want to cut. My one is still across, this is my high palm up slash right across. So this could be across the neck, it could be anything covering the high line. My one is up here, my two is right here. From the side view, I have my palm up slash up here to cover the high line, and my palm down slash to cover the mid line. Of course I don't want to come too low, and I can't really come too low with this wheelchair here, but my low slash, my, my uh, number two count, can either come right above his head and protect him this way, almost like a roof or umbrella over his head, or I can come right on this low line and really cover the angle right from his head to his feet, or his head to his knees, and maybe even to his feet. So I have my one and my two. My three are my thrusts. Now hopefully at these points, I would be moving him immediately and engaging by the time I get to two or to three. Um, I could have clearing shots from the beginning, one, two, three, and four, 
So now with my left hand, I have to learn how to move him the same way I'd use it to protect a principal if I was in, uh, you know, security and start to move in a protective position so I can place him far away from my threat and I can still engage in, in this way. Now, if we kind of keep things static in the kind of scarecrow fashion that sometimes we train in uh, Sayokali, not unlike when people go to the range and start putting holes in targets and a fixed body target down range, we can start to use our weapon and learn how to use it before we start to add a whole lot of movement. So if right from the beginning, I have my one and my two, my three and my four are my high and low hooking thrusts. My five, now from this angle, I can use it to sweep up and uppercut right along this line. So I have my one and my two, my three and my four, and my five that protects his line over here. So it'll protect him on this side. If I move at this five count, then it protects this line right here. So I have my five, and now my six protects him on this line too. So I can do all of this with moving, all of this with my footwork and movement. I can have my one, two, three, four, five, six, and I can start to move him in different directions. Or as I move him, five, six, I can have my different lines there. So a lot of the context will depend on his position, the position of myself, and the position of our threats. So I have, so far, I have my one and my two, my three and my four, my five and my six, my seven, I can use as a thrust straight on, or if I would need to zone and move him off, this is my thrust straight here. If I could take him and still move him this way, my eight slashes right down this way too. And my nine would thrust in here. So from the front, if I don't add any movement, I just have my one and my two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. From the side, I have one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. From the other side, I have my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now if I add in, start to add in movement, I can move off every count. So I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I can do it off the 2 count. So now I have 1 and 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I can do it off the 3 or the 4, and for this purpose they would kind of be the same as far as my positioning. So I'd have my 1 and my 2. Now my three and my four. I could do it off my five count. So I have one, two, three, four. As I step in, five comes up here. I may take this switch and cut between and learn to place my hands in the, as my blade passes. So that's my five to six. I could do it off six. Now as I do it off six, I do have to be aware, obviously, of his placement and the placement of my weapon. So when I come in, if I could not move off to that side, that might be a good place for me to come in for one, two, three, four, five, and six in this way. Johan Carl has often talked about how uh, preceding any strike, we do have protective measures that usually come in. If I enter in off the seven line, I have my one and my two, my three, four, five, six, and now seven. For eight, I have my one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight right there. And last one, my nine, a lot like seven, I'll come in for my one and my two, my three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and my nine I start to thrust in. Now these are all entering as I get him away from a threat. Now I could do positions too where I just come in or I learn to back up. I could be backing up and covering these lines here. So I have purely linear retreating footwork. Uh, I, I really wouldn't do advancing or attacking footwork with him in front because I really don't want to use him as any kind of shield or battering ram. 
So a lot of my uh, movements would be evasive movements to put him in, in better positions. Um, and if anything, I would look to uh, maintain being the feeder and still provide uh, positive pressure this way while I can provide a route of escape for us both um, away from whatever threat. Now, although this is designed uh, and demonstrated today with a long blade, obviously, uh, you know, as I've shown you, you can use a multitude of other weapons. And even though I've shown you with William here in his wheelchair, this could represent any kind of family member or person of our, our tribe that may have altered or limited mobility. This could be a mom that's pushing her baby in a stroller. It could be me with my son in his wheelchair. It could be, uh, you know, my brother uh, pushing, you know, someone elderly in the family in a wheelchair. It could be anything that starts to incorporate uh, different and altered types of movement. So this would require not only adjusting of our technique, but of our positioning, of our footwork, of our strategy and maneuvers. And like with most things, uh, we start to calculate for multiple opponents, mass attack, uh, and multiple people also with us. So there's a good, an equal chance that while I may be with William, I may also be with my wife. I may be with our other kids too. I could be with our family. Or I could be simply with uh, a, whole, a whole group of people on my team who already know how to fight together and uh, have a strategy if we would have to engage. Now, um, in some of our future clips, I will be showing some of the other things that, that I had discussed. So, uh, using other weapons, uh, fighting around us in 360 degrees with multiple opponents in multiple positions. Uh, I would hope to uh, show you some specifics in regards to wheelchairs, placement of how to holster and sheath uh, long weapons that could be easily you know, concealed and carried on him, whether it's long blades, it could even be uh, holster short blades. Uh, in the Sayuk and Atienza Kali systems, we talk a lot about uh, holstering weapons and carry and deployment. We believe that you cannot train and talk about weapon use without discussing uh, carry and deployment. And in the same case, uh, I, I feel like it would be a very important thing to include. And we have uh, an opportunity to do so, not, in, not much different from the same way that people might also carry or holster or conceal firearms in their home for protection or various uh, you know, self-defense type of tools in their cars or, or on their persons. We could use this as well to protect our kids with special needs. Uh, so I hope that was a brief introduction of, to what, of what we're going to be showing. Um, obviously, this material pulls from all of the systems and all of my instructors, including those that I have not yet mentioned. Um, but it is heavily guided and influenced by the Sayo Kali system and the eye of Manatuhan for Sayo. So, um, we hope to see you soon. And uh, William and I will be talking about some other options in using our Filipino arts for families who have children with special needs.